What's my outcome? What do I want? What's most important to me? What's the result I'm committed to getting? That one change will change completely how you respond in your life because it'll change you from focusing where everyone's demanding your attention or what you're afraid of or what might give you pleasure in the moment to what's most important to you. And those, by the way, are the three things that get our focus. If we don't discipline ourselves, what gets our focus? Something we're afraid of, something to give us pain. What's the second thing that gets our focus? We don't pay attention. Something will give us pleasure. It's like, you know what? I'm so stressed out. Oh, that chocolate's looking good. Oh, that, you know, I'm going to go over to have my little coffee, you know, at my smoke a mocha doko cream, this thing and that thing, and I'm going to escape for a few moments. Because the focus is how to feel good. How to not feel bad, how to feel good. What's the third thing gets your focus? Other people's demands. Where do they come from today? Where do you get other people's demands? Only face to face? See, you used to have that one handle, right? Okay, well, I, I, I know they're coming down the elevator. I'll go over here. <laughs> you know, I know they're going to lunch at this time. I'll come back at that time. How many ever played this game at one time in your life where it's like, I don't want to deal with this right now, so you just put yourself in a different location to avoid the stimulus of someone else's demand. How many used to do that? Say, I. Does it work anymore? No, they're instant messaging you, they're emailing you, right? They're, they're, they're everywhere. Right? There's triggers in every way for this to occur. Pick up the phone and call you, and where's the phone now? In your pocket. And by the way, if you're not there, they left you a voicemail. You got another job answering your voicemail. Think about it. So today, it's pretty hard to avoid the demands. It's not necessarily there are more demands. It's just that we're accessible to more demands. And if you don't know what you want, and you don't know why it's a must for you to achieve it, and you don't have a plan, I can promise you something. You're going to fit in everybody else's plan. And you're going to wonder why you're stressed. And you're going to wonder why I'm not fulfilled. What is time? How do you know when it's a long time? Or how do you know when it's a short time? It's not because it's 10 minutes or 10 hours. How many have been in 10 hours and time flew because you loved what you're doing, didn't have any sense of time whatsoever? How many have had that experience? Say, I. How many have had 10 minutes feel like 10 years you want to kill somebody to get out of the situation? <laughs> so what is time? Time is emotion. Got to remember that time is emotion. What you're really managing is emotion. Another word for that would be meaning or fulfillment focus is power but you got to take it take it back take back that power and you got to know when you do that that focus how to chunk it how to group it so you're not overwhelmed let me show you how to make it simpler when mass information is coming at you you get overwhelmed most of us are great deletion creatures We delete most of life. Right now, there are millions of things around you you could be focusing on, thinking about, giving meanings to, making decisions about what to do. Millions. Right now, you could be focusing on the blood rushing through your left eardrum or the feeling of your skin against your body. But most of you delete that. You don't even think about clothing against your skin until I mention it or your heartbeat. Most of the universe you've deleted because you go crazy if you try to think about it all because human beings have a limited amount they can focus on at one time. And most of your stress is because you're thinking about too many things at once. In fact, when people don't do things, it's not because they can't. It's not even because they don't want to. It's because of the way they are focusing on what I call chunking things. When people don't follow through, here's what they do. Give an example. Who here believes exercise is very important, but you don't exercise regularly? Let me see a show of hands. Raise your hand. (laughs) More hands than most of us want to raise our hand, right? Now, who here really focuses, or I should say, exercises regularly? Raise your hand. Regularly. Okay, great. Who here does not exercise regularly, even though you believe it's important? Just be truthful. Okay, great. So let's see what the difference is here. A person here who does not exercise regularly, I want you to raise your hand, and I want you to tell me why you don't exercise regularly. Be truthful. Okay? Yes, sir. I don't have the time. Now, is that true? (laughs) He even knows it's not true. He's going to answer you first. No. But it feels like he doesn't have the time because time is emotion. And he's got so many other things he is focused on getting results in that adding this to the list seems like a lot, right? And the other things are very important to him, like his business. I don't have the time. He has the time. What's the real reason he doesn't do it? Because of the way he thinks about exercise. When he focuses on what it would take to exercise, he does it very differently than someone who follows through. When you think about exercising, what's involved? Uh, 
Okay, he starts thinking about, I got to get to mile 14 of the London Marathon. And that, even the thought of trying to get to the 14th mile, much less the 25th mile, is like beyond my imagination right now. So he's what I call overchunked. He's not thinking about what he wants. He's thinking about what's painful. He's just saw a perfect example. He's not even thinking about victory or succeeding. So the chance of him following through on something that he associates major pain to, when he can do something else right now, he can feel competent or successful at. His chances of following through are very limited. How many of you that? Say I. His focus is on failure. His focus is on pain. That's why he isn't following through. Okay. He's also focused on the 14th mile of a marathon rather than today's workout. Which one seems more daunting to you? So when you think of what, it, and here's also what he's thinking about. He's thinking about the process, not the outcome or result he wants. And when you think about what it's going to take to do something, usually it takes a lot and you're not going to want to do it. So he's overchunked himself. He's trying to eat the whale whole without taking any smaller bites. And it seems too big for him. So he says, well, I'll do it when? Later. As my Australian friends would say, later. <laughs> Right? And of course, the problem with doing it tomorrow is when you get to tomorrow, tomorrow is today, and tomorrow never comes. So, and you keep promising yourself. By the way, what does this do to you emotionally when you keep breaking your own promises with yourself? Or you keep failing to do things that you know are important? Does it increase your level of certainty and confidence? No. What it does is it erodes it. And when you erode confidence in one area, believe it or not, it affects the other areas too. Do you believe me on that? Don't believe me. What about your own life experience? Maybe not one area, but it starts to be multiple areas. It sure does. Another reason why somebody doesn't exercise or do anything is because they don't just chunk it too big. They chunk it in too many details. I'll give you a perfect example. So I asked somebody one time, I said, uh, okay, how important is exercise? Is? Oh, exercise is extremely important. Really? Okay, good. And tell me, why don't you exercise regularly? Well, I, you know, I just don't have time. Okay, everybody gives that answer. That sounds wonderful. So tell me though, don't tell me about how much time you don't have. Tell me this. When you think about exercising, what do you think about? Which is a way of saying, what do you focus on? And so this woman says to me, well, my gosh, you know, I, 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 mean, I, I mean, what do you mean what do I think about? Well, let's say I said to you, you, you got to start exercising and I'm going to put a gun to the head of your children and I will do very horrible things and hurt them badly if you don't exercise. Could you do it? Oh yeah, I could do it. You know, if, I, if, you, if some mafia person came here and said, I'm gonna kill your children if you don't exercise every day, how many think you could find a way to exercise every day no matter what your time constraints may be? So remember this, remember this. Change is never a matter of ability. It's always a matter of motivation. I'll say that again. Change is never a matter of ability. It's always a matter of motivation or drive, having strong enough reasons. If you got a strong enough reason, you could figure out the time, couldn't you? So the biggest part of life and time management is knowing what you want and having enough reasons to follow through.